Hello, I'm Brenda Chambers, today on Tribal Tracks. It's their first time in an Aboriginal community. The crabs are ready! But can they keep up? We send a couple into a Canadian First Nation for an unforgettable cultural experience. Welcome to Tribal Tracks. More and more Aboriginal communities are welcoming visitors to their territories so that they might share their cultures and build friendships with people all over the world. On today's show, we follow a couple to the Hawaii First Nation where they learn firsthand about the gentle and fun-loving nature of the Nuchalnath people. Uh, we've been in business now here in Canada about 18 years. Actually, Ronnie's been in business since she was 20, and I'm not going to tell you how long that is, or they'll be in trouble. Ronnie and Graham Gerard own and operate a thriving hair salon in their home in Nanaimo, British Columbia. With their children grown and out on their own, Ronnie and Graham spend a lot of their time together, working at the salon. Sometimes we start really early, yeah, and sometimes we finish really late, so yeah, it gets pretty busy. Yeah. Once a month, I, uh, I get away camping, or fishing or something like that because I find that working in the house I have to get out otherwise it's like getting cabin fever that you're in here all the time. I have to get away and that's my little church. The couple has planned a three-day adventure that will take them just about as far away from the hairstyling world as they can get. They're going to visit with the people of the Hawaii First Nations who live out on the wild and beautiful west coast of Vancouver Island. Okay, I'm looking forward to going to Bucina. I'm looking forward to finding out more about the culture. I think it's the fishing, the whale watching, uh, and meeting you know, real Aboriginal people. I don't know whether I'm going to be looking forward to sleeping in a tent though. <laughs> Getting out fishing and catch that 35, I'm going to say 40 pound, I want a big fish, 40 pound, that would be good. The Gerards are headed for the Pachina Bay campground, located next to the remote community of Bamfield, situated at the northern end of the world famous West Coast Trail. The unspoiled rainforest, rugged coastline and pristine wilderness attract outdoor adventurers from around the world. To get there by road, the visitor must endure a 75-kilometer drive over a logging road filled with potholes. For many thousands of years, the Hawaii people have lived in close harmony with nature, enjoying the abundance offered by both land and sea. They're an easygoing, friendly people who welcome visitors with open arms. Hi. Hi I'm Derek Peters. I'm Graham. Graham, nice to meet you, Graham. I'm Ronnie. Ronnie, nice, nice to meet you. you. It's part of our traditional custom to always acknowledge and welcome visitors onto our land. So welcome to uh, Hawaii territory, and I hope you enjoy your next few days here visiting with us and uh, getting involved with some of the activities. Thank you. Oh, thank yes. you, Derek. Thank you very much. Look at that, Ron. Wow, isn't that nice, eh? Jeez, look at that. That's unbelievable, isn't it, eh? Untouched land. Oh, man, it's magic. What makes Pachina Bay campsite so special is the beach. And people come here to, to lounge and to relax and uh, get away from it all. People come from all over. Uh, we, we've got um, all over Canada, uh, Ontario, uh, Alberta, uh, some Nova Scotians, uh, 
a lot of people will, will fly into those, those cities and they're from European countries and they've rented vehicles to drive down here. That'll do us. So I've got one already open, up. There's home for two nights. Okay. That's where we wake up. Uh, what I'd like to see them walk away with is fond memories, uh, family fond memories of camping and the uh, meeting of us going away with good memories of that. I want to take you two up here to show you where we normally practice our culture and it's at this hall right here. This is the House of Hue. It was built in uh, 2000. This hall was built in honour of our elders. Uh, when we opened the hall we had a big celebration of course and we call it a potlatch. Potlatch. And tribes come from all over the coast. So where is it the, the big logs come from, Terry? It's from our neighbouring First Nation had to give us those logs because we couldn't find any in our own territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was quite an effort to get them here because their span is about 120 feet long. Get yeah. See how uh, quite impressive it is when you see mm -hmm. the logs run right across up top there. Wow. That's spectacular. The reason why it looks like that is because we want this, we wanted to replicate a uh, traditional longhouse uh, where we, where we tr what we traditionally lived in. And uh, so this is the best of what we can do today in the modern day. Where are we going now, Robert? Well, right now we're going out of the Banfield uh, Inlet and then we're gonna cut across to uh, what they call, well, we call it chumpet. This little island over here, you can see the, the tree line there. That, that's the island that we call chumpet. Chumpet. Chumpet, yeah, and that's where I was born. And uh, once you get inside here, you'll see the beach here, but there was houses from one end of the beach to the other, and two or three deep. So, The best part I liked about when I lived here was somebody would, would holler, the crabs are ready! <laughs> and everybody came down the beach and what they would do is they would just build a great big uh, fire. Yeah. And the, the, you know those old galvanized tubs? Yeah. They would fill those with crabs. And, and they would, so we just come down the beach and we'd eat our crabs. Right on the beach. Yep. Just get yeah. fresher than that. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I used to love it. But this, this was just so fantastic here. It's such a beautiful place. You know, it'd be nice to share this beauty with other people. Yeah. People yeah. I get to visit. This is going to be something you don't see in this world anymore. Mm -hmm. where, where a place is remote, isolated, and you're just with nature. Where we are right now, We'll, we'll have, have a cultural tourism, equal, equal tourism. Oh. So you use cultural interpretation with the equal tourism. And yeah. we feel it's going to be an awesome economic opportunity for us to, to venture and into. Educate the public, educate the public and, and let them participate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they, they become participants in something that you can't see anywhere anymore. Yeah, and it was yeah. so beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Lori. Nice to meet you, Larry. I'm Ronnie. Ronnie, nice to meet you. I'm Graham. Graham, welcome aboard. Oh, yeah. Well, here's where we should hit one if we're going to hit one. Uh, growing up, being a fisherman, my dad taught me things like, here's where you go fishing when the tide's coming up. Yeah. You go home fishing over at Omoa when the tide's going down in the morning, an ebb tide, they call it. So you learn those kinds of traditional knowledge things uh, um, just by, by doing more than, you know, listening, I guess, per se. I'm remembering it all now as I go into this business of tourism, so. What we're trying to do is uh, emulate uh, what happens naturally. Salmon will come in and they'll uh, scurry you right through a whole cloud of fish and then uh, come back and eat the crippled ones. So we're just trying to emulate those, uh, what the crippled ones are doing.